Hey guys, <clears throat> here we are back on Wind Chaser. Um, just purchased uh, Field 29 and uh, went ahead and put down a lot of nitrogen and now we're just uh, busy ripping it with uh, the two big uh, uh, tractors. You can see all the way over there to 13, 1, 2, 3, 44, 17, 18, uh, 29. Now we're busy. Uh, we also picked up 34 over there um, after we sold all that corn. Um, so we're working some uh, different fields. Hopefully we can pick up some of these smaller ones too. Um, So, these guys just finished working. Uh, this is the new version um, uh, 3.1 actually. I went ahead and um, forgot when I rescaled this to 27.6 feet that I forgot to um, adjust the collisions on the frame. Um, but it has new disc. I reduced the compression, the initial compression, so it um, seems like it's on the axle more. Um, so now that this field is done, we'll just bring these guys um, and then there's the trucks we we're using um, for our uh, corn on great demand, but um, Someone said that you can bring it back to the dealer and you know, like get reimbursed a little bit. Um, and I tried that and it like froze my game. So. I'll just take the loss and let him sit there, so. And we also went ahead and rented a sprayer again and put the, you know, Put down all of our nitrogen before. I don't know why these stay down when the train isn't even around. So what we'll do is, um, well we can't do much of anything yet. I have a little Just pull these in the field and get it ready. So I'm using a uh, different um, recording software now. I'm using uh, iAction. Went ahead and bought that because MSI was uh, being incredibly unstable. And shadow play doesn't work with farm farm sim, so so there's so this is the guy we're using right now to carefully rip up. Our perimeters, so we can do uh, so. Course play can calculate the uh, area of this field and then plot a course, so we can get the big tractors in here. I was just using this because um, the other ones were busy, but have since caught up. But I think it's the same. So apparently I don't own this. There's a conflict.
we're gonna have to figure that out. So the only issue about uh, farming on this side of the, the train tracks is you have to deal with the train when you're doing your grain transport. Uh, if you're using course play to haul your grain. Um, it gets a little bit uh, dicey if you're trying to dodge the train and so, uh, so on. I rescaled this to be it's 270 inches. Um, before it was like 10 or like 11 meters. Now it's 7. So it's properly scaled. doing is trying to get a quick uh, border for course play to recognize the area of this and calculate um, courses for the other tractors. Uh, that corner down there is going to be a little bit issue so we'll just go back and fix that. most bizarre thing. Yeah. 
it must be a conflict with 35. A little speed bump. So those guys are off to work. So 34 actually is seventeen point four eight. Seventeen point five hectares. Seven point two. So we got a pretty decent deal on this field. Well, had to put down a lot of nutrients and plow the whole thing. And Puts on back to the farm then. Hopefully those big guys will finish quick. 
Then we'll have to like pick up those extra spots that weren't plowed in with our cultivator. Oh my god. They must be like out of balance. Anyways, there isn't really much going on right now. Um, I just wanted to test this new software to see um, how it compared to MSI. And it kind of lags my game, um, whereas MSI really didn't. see all of our crops growing. A nice new field we just bought. Nicely plowed. And then I uh, went ahead and built this this road now, so no more gravel. Just uh, spruced it up over here. So this is a sprayer we rented and um, I'm just going to go ahead and fill it with water because this field uh, 3 is really dry for whatever reason. So ideally you want to be around 70% moisture. For your best yields. So we're just down here spraying water. We uh, put down lime on all the fields, finish doing that, just because all the fields are a little bit acidic.
Nice view of the trees. So you can get a pretty decent idea of how big that Field 29 is now, now that it's plowed. It um, goes all the way around the little trees there and uh, see them working on 34. So. Should be uh, fun to harvest, and then I think we'll start tackling some of these fields over here next. Around here, the 27, 26, 27, 28, 25. And then uh, pick up that corner over there, then we can uh, start working on this corner over there. Because I'd rather have grow, grow. Um, on this side where there's no traffic, no trains versus always crossing uh, the train tracks over there. But there are some nice fields. It's really raining out here. I have my window open and it's kind of pouring out. It, so. But um, you can easily easily farm all this acreage. Um, it uh, is pretty cost effective to rent versus buying equipment. That way you can just rent out and then hire workers. So it might cost me a hundred, hundred and fifty thousand in seed, equipment, fertilizer, wages. But you know, I get depending on price of commodities, you know, one point two, one point three million in revenue. So you can grow quick if you rent and just acquire land. I made the mistake early on of buying equipment when I should have really been renting if that's your objective is to grow. And then once you get to a certain um, um, level, you can start buying. I mean, I trade in my equipment after it reaches 100 hours, so I put some hours on my equipment anyways, but Like it's not really cost effective to buy a four hundred another four hundred thousand dollar tractor when you can rent one for a day and get all your tillage done for you know four grand or five grand including the the, the chisel plow. So you can see that the mo moisture in this field is pretty low. I don't know how it got that low. It's not like we actually plowed this more than anything else. can't wait till I finish all my exams and I have two weeks to just kind of recover and you know exercise and clean my apartment and start uh, working on that row gator once again just because uh, I'm not really a huge fan of these Pantera 
sprayers, I mean, they're cool. They work great, but it's more, it's not an American, uh, imp, you know, machine. It's, it's European, so. You would never see this anywhere in Wisconsin, that's for sure. Except maybe at like a farm trade show or something. That'd be about it. No one would be placing orders. <laughs> So we, we went really heavy with soybean this year, um, and then we also uh, planted uh, a couple, like almost 200 acres of canola, so or whatever it is, it's 30, probably like 120, 140 acres or whatever field 17 is. guys just finished their headlands and now they're uh... I'll just let this guy get a little bit ahead that way and I always conflicting on their turns Paid for this field, and we underpaid for 29. So, I think overall we came out pretty decent. I mean, we pretty much doubled the size of 29. That would realistically be like a five, six hundred thousand dollar field, and we picked it up for like three, three hundred and seventy thousand. So, we have a John Deere 9R. Uh, 9RT pulling the John Deere 2720 and then we have the Cat Challenger pulling the same implement. They're going to be here a while. I wonder what the moisture is in this one. Oh well this is also low. I'm going to go ahead and refill this since we have it. I'm just filling up off this trailer. Pretty hard to maintain moisture in your field, especially if you look on the on the forecast. It's you know we have 
negative 28% here with no gain, so you pretty much have to spray your fields with uh, water or something just to regain that little bit of moisture. So it's a lot nicer to record <clears throat> with the confidence that it's not going to crash. For whatever reason, MSI was just so unstable with this game. And like, I didn't even have my graphics card overclocked or anything, so... So I like keeping my uh, nutrient menu up so I can get a rough estimate of how the overall field is. And then you can also use this to look at your nutrients. Basically you want it to all be green. We have a little bit of yellow. is for um, then this is for PK acidity moisture you want it to be around 70% for 100% yield, so hopefully we can just maintain that moisture by spraying our fields. Uh, we have two more grow stages, so that's um, four days plus this, so that's uh, five days until harvest. So you can see them making progress in 34 over there. Probably like a quarter of the way done. So the moisture over here is looking pretty good. happy that I put that road in there. It just really spruces the whole place up. It just brings a little bit more light to the area. It just makes everything look a lot cleaner, cleaner and crisper. It really like uh, complements the gravel texture. It just really adds to the appearance of this 
area down here, so I've been doing a lot of work since I've been farming in this part of the map and um, all these fields like this uh, 29 and 34 and 13, really haven't, and 18, haven't really farmed them much at all. And uh, as you can see over there on 34, um, there's a little field area um, confliction with another field, so to go back into Giants Editor and fix that. So the only way you find these little bugs is if you uh, play the map in the terrain. If they're like, if it's not smooth enough and it starts snaking equipment or uh, things have issues just turning around, like down there, the bottom of 17 was a little bit too low, had too much of a pull effect. So. So you just gotta play your map and work the bugs out. No one better to do it than the person that's making it. Um, another thing is, once I'm done with my finals, I wanna really look into uh, the UPK mod so I can put capacities on my dryer, my, my grain silos. So there's actually a point of buying it, so you can actually buy additional storage. And uh, each, each silo will have um, a capacity, and you have to empty the entire silo out in order to put a new one in. I think that would be really cool. Uh, that's really the one thing that this map is lacking right now is realistic silo capacities. The UPK, I know, can address that because in 13 there were replaceable silos that had capacities and one unload trigger, but uh, the 13 and 15 UPK are radically different. So. But I'm really happy I figured out this GRLE issue. It was uh, really bugging me. It had this random stripage of uh, uh, in the fields of crops. It was like a, a grid pattern of uh, crop was like on an extra growth stage ahead or something. So, but I just completely deleted all the fruit the fruit file from the map and started fresh. And that seemed to work. Started to smooth out roads, make them nice gradual curves, nothing too sharp and rough. Just so the all your equipment drives nice on the roads. Power lines everywhere. More trees, I've been adding more trees. One thing too is I wish like it, the, this map has the real terrain where the terrain goes at different angles, like follows your turn. If the uh, crops would do that too, if they weren't locked to grid. I wonder if I should make that like false or something, align with map or whatever it is in the i3D. But if your plants also follow the terrain curve, that'd be great. Wow, would you look at that? 1%. Talk about efficient. So 
that's a large field of canola. I've never harvested it uh, before, so I don't know what the yield's going to be like. I imagine it'll be similar to soybean, if not greater. Hopefully this road will help with course play braking as well. Here we are, we finally reached the part where the field doesn't exist. So there's creating new fields. 